because me, I was always a type to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. But I told myself, why not be behind the camera to be able to help others? Mm -hmm. So I actually have had a couple people that got in offers off of my film. Is that right? So stuff like that motivates me to keep going. The yep. same way he's inspiring kids, the same way I'm inspiring kids. Absolutely. And he's doing it with YouTube, and I'm doing it with sports. But notice how we're both doing it with a camera. Mm -hmm. So a camera could change your life. Like, real, like, it's like crazy. Yeah. It's not even explainable. I don't it's care what my mom said. <laughs> like, Careful now. I, no, I don't, I don't. Cause I do, but I don't, yeah. I don't, because I know what I'm doing. My friends, welcome back to the Smoky Mirror Podcast, where we dive deep into the creative minds that shape our culture and inspire us all. I'm Jordan Jones, your host and fellow creator, on a mission to share knowledge and inspiration to help you make your mark on the world. From artists and musicians to entrepreneurs and more, join us as we explore the intentional act of creation and the forces that drive us to do God's work. Today, I'm with Ruben. A videographer down here in Miami that has been doing some pretty dope stuff. I don't, I've never met him in person. I've just seen his work online and I was pretty impressed with what I was seeing. And I was just tuned in like a fan, like, damn, I love when these videos come out. I think I first seen you on a video. Maybe you did a video for like King Sid or somebody like yeah. that or, or, or Geo. Um, King Sid, King Sid. King Sid. Okay. And then I just been seeing the, the sports ones too. And I, those ones are super dope all over the South Florida. So, well, Ruben, I appreciate you for coming on the show, man. I, pre I appreciate you for letting me come on. So you're a young guy. You just turned 20 on Monday, huh? Yeah. But you look like you raw with them cameras, man. You know what the fuck you're doing. How'd you get started with all that? I mean, I started with a phone. Mm. I was still in high school. And, you know, it all started during COVID. Mm -hmm. So, you know, COVID happened. We were all home. Right. We I couldn't go out, but I was the type of person to always play basketball. You play basketball. I couldn't play basketball no more. Mm. I got a lot of people don't know this, but I dropped basketball mm -hmm. to pick up the camera because not only because of COVID, but I have health problems. Mm. So with the type of health problems that I have with my heart condition, all of that, I wouldn't be able to go that far in basketball. Mm. So, you know, I had to drop it for the better and make something out of it so I could be something in life. Nice. I was 17 years old going into the 12th grade. I bought my first $200 camera. And from there, it just, you know, I just got better. That's dope. My, my first time shooting was at the park. I, I just, you know, a workout video. My first time editing was on the phone. Mm -hmm. I did everything on the phone. I dropped the video, and then it got like over four thousand views. My first video. The first video. And it got that much views only because it had like good athletes. Mm -hmm. Cause I always I know people. Yeah. I just, you know, I just like never actually started. So since I actually started, I started with people that were going to college, like such as UM, Ten Tennessee, all yeah, those big colleges. All the D one guys. Yeah, yeah, all the D one guys. So. I dropped that video, it got 4,000 views, and, you know, I just took off from there. That's dope. I love how you were like, you know what, I love basketball, but my heart ain't right for it, so let me just switch switch it up. What? Why the camera? Like, why not anything else? Because, it, it's, you know, it's more than just a camera. Hmm. Like, I feel like, because me, I was always a type to be in front of the camera, mm -hmm. but... I told myself, why not be behind the camera to be able to help others? Mm. So, like, people think being a cameraman is easy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I have fun, but it's a lot of work behind, like, outside of not recording. Because mm -hmm. while everybody's recording, like, why? Okay, while I'm recording you, I got to go home and edit while you're just resting. Right. Late night editing, uh, you know, a lot of. You know, I got to find the music, mm -hmm. the beat, all of that. So I got to make sure the video's right. So that way, when I drop the video, I get more people to want to hire me. Mm -hmm. And then my whole point of me starting this, my whole point of me being behind the camera to, to be able to help others purchase their career in sports. Mm. 
So I actually have had a couple people that got in offers off of my film. Is that right? So stuff like that motivates me to keep going. Hell yeah, that's dope as fuck. Yeah. That's why I think I really resonate with you because I'm kind of trying to do something similar where I see people who are creating things that I think are just dope as fuck, really powerful. I don't want to bring them on here to say like, look, everybody needs to be tuned in with this person because look at the shit that they're doing. And so I love that you were like, you know what? I want to help people basically pursue their career in sports. And so I'm going to hop behind the camera and make that shit happen. And a, a, a lot of people, when they first meet me, now be, be honest, mm -hmm. without me telling you that I, I just turned 20, how old did you think I really was? I mean, maybe even younger, but I... No, you, no, some people think I'm like over 25. I mean, when I first seen you, I thought you was young. But when I seen the videos and shit, I thought you were around my age. Like, I'm 26, so I thought you was around my age from yeah, seeing yeah. the videos. But I didn't know you was just turned 20. Like, damn, yeah. that's impressive. I was yeah. impressed. This is, my, this is my third year doing what I'm doing. That's crazy. And like, it's, it's like you said earlier, I, I worked with King Sid. So working with him, honestly working with King Sid and like, you know, the group he has around him, mm -hmm. it motivated me to, to keep them going. Like don't stop no matter what. Cause yeah. being around him, you know, a lot of people are always gonna bash him for whatever reason they have. But me, I'm gonna always respect him. Because right. he gave me the opportunity he gave me. And being around him, he does not sleep. Like, So me, now, like you could ask anybody around me, I barely sleep. Like It's like I told you. I just flew out yesterday back to Miami. Mm -hmm. Friday, I'm flying out again for another football tournament. So I'm just, I'm just on go time. Like. Yeah. So it's like being around him really helped me a lot because it showed me how it is to be like a real... A real person that that's their own boss. Mm -hmm. So he's his own boss, making his own money, doing his own thing. Yeah, me. That's what I want to do. He's the same way he's inspiring kids. The same way I'm inspiring kids. Absolutely. And he's doing it with YouTube, and I'm doing it with sports. But notice how we're both doing it with a camera. Mm -hmm. So a camera could change your life, like real, like it's like crazy. Yeah. It's not even explainable. It's not. It's crazy. It's not. It really is crazy. You show people what's going on, and it, a video could get a million views just like that. I had a chick on my podcast, and she posted a clip from it. Got a million views on TikTok. She got so many followers now, likes, people hiring her. You know what I'm saying? Like, your shit can change instantly it, off a of video. All it takes is one one clip. That's crazy. One clip could change your whole life. How did you get connected with King Sid? Like, did y'all go to school together, or, like, how did that work? <sighs> nah, all right. So, me and King Sid, we actually hooked. Uh, I, I was a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I was a fan. I grew up watching him. No wrong with that. Cause you know, no, I know. But I think he's like, he's like 21, 22. Yeah. So he, he's young just like me, but he's older. And I always been watching him. So you know, it, me the type of person I was just trying to be on the come up. I hit him up. Then, first time me meet him was his at his meeting greet. Mm hmm. Uh. I met him at the meet and greet. From there, it just went on. I, I went to to one of his boxing videos. After that boxing video that I went to and I took some pictures, we just we just linked together. Dope. So when you went to that meet and greet, were you like, I want to work with him? Or were you just like, oh, you know, he cool? Me, okay, me, the type of person I am, like, I like to meet people, but I, I, I like to work with people also. Yeah. So... No matter how many, like even if I work with Lil Baby, like even if I meet Lil Baby, I want to work. work with him. Yeah. I'm trying to work because it's more, it's more than just meeting a person. That one time that you meet somebody and you get, if you get that opportunity, it could take you so far. Mm -hmm. So the type of mentality that I have, I was, I was going to that meeting greet to meet him. All those people around him, it, I know it was going to be hard. Yeah, It was over like 3,000 people in that meeting greet. I bet. I went to that meeting greet. It was a little bit hard trying to, you know, get to him, but it happened. It happened. I went to that boxing video, and then from there we just, we just connected. Everybody, everybody thought he was my brother. Yeah, <laughs> y'all do look a little similar. They, they, yeah, they, they, they said we look alike, but nah, he he just like honestly, King said is is a good guy. He's, I like what he's doing now. He has, 
he has his own thing going on with his group, and I feel like. I feel like he's gonna go a long way. Me too. I mean, honestly, King Sid is somebody that I definitely take inspiration from. I'm like, I don't care if you older than me, younger than me. If you're doing some raw shit, millions of views, that's some shit that's impressive. And I think that, uh, I think it's dope that he gave you a, a chance. I like how y'all linked up. But I'm really surprised how you have this mentality at such a young age of like being real strategic and real like calculated with how you move. Like, is this something you got from your parents or like where'd you get this drive from? So like. Growing up, I mean, b before I get into this, I, I, I just want to say, like, the last thing about King said, I always yeah. respect him. Yeah. And I always, you know, give him his flowers for the opportunity he gave me. For sure. So besides that, the mentality I have, I just, the way I grew up, you know, a lot of people made fun of me because mm -hmm. of the way I talk. Mm. So that showed me what the kind of people there is in this world. Mm. So... No matter, no matter who you are, everybody's different. Right. There's some people that are going to mess with you for what you do. Some people that are not going to mess with you. Mm -hmm. Once you come up, that's when they're going to act like they always mess with you. Facts. So the mentality I have is because I feel like if you move your own way, you're going to... Like me, in high school, I had to get out of the group I was in to be able to be the person I am now. Mm. I feel like if I was never in that group... If I stayed in that group, I'll be like, I'll be where they're at right now. Mm. And right now, like, I'm gonna just be honest, they're not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And me, I'm doing something in life where I'm motivating other kids. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I have this mentality is because if I don't have it, somebody else is gonna have it. That's right. And I feel like if I don't move the way I move now, I'll never be where I wanna be. Mm. And the way, the way I live, like this, honestly, I pray every day, and I live by this every day. The same way, like, it's the same because I do sports. The mm -hmm. same way your career could be over in one mistake, in one little situation, the same way your life could be over. Mm. So I take every day as if it's my last day. I live my I live every day as if it's my last because you never know when you're going to be out of here. That's true. So the day... I leave, I want to make sure I left an impact in this world knowing that I was able to help a lot of kids. Mm, that's a powerful message, bro. Yeah. That's powerful. And, and you know, people like me, I'm young. So working with young people, I want to make sure as they grow up, they have the type of mentality I have because mm -hmm. you never know what somebody's going through. Mm -hmm. I always want to make sure somebody's doing good because no matter what, I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm working with you, I'm going to be there because... Yeah. You, not only am I helping you, but you're helping me putting content on my page. Mm -hmm. So, in reality, without them, there's no me. Mm. So, I'm always, no matter how far I get, I'm always show love. Hell yeah. That's that's something I want to do too. Like, I, I made this podcast because I want to be able to give people a platform where they come on and now they just 10x their shit, you know, to just get more exposure, more notoriety. I, I, I want that for other people. And I want people to, to watch this podcast and be like, wow. This is somebody doing something similar to me that I could see myself doing. This is how they got started. Like, I, if they can do it, I can do it too. I meet a lot of people who just don't believe in themselves and people who are scared to get started because they don't want to look stupid. They don't want to fail. And so when I hear stories like you, especially people doing it at such a young age, it's so inspiring. And I'm just like, damn, I know other people would love to, to hear this. And just to see the the videos too, because I almost feel like when I, when I started following you, I thought... I didn't. I would have never guessed that you just started like two years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like your shit has been good from the jump. Like, yeah. how did you learn how to? Well, first, before we, I, I want to ask about some editing, but I know you, you did text me about some stuff that you wanted to, to speak about. Do you want to like? Do, do we touch on it yet, or? I, I, I can wait for that. Okay. I can wait for that. So then, what do you be using for editing? Premiere? Uh, no, I oh. don't actually okay. I use my own. You see, I, I don't want to put. That oh, you want to share it yeah, though? Yeah, oh, okay. I, I don't want to put that, but. I use my own thing, cause one thing about me, I'm a. For me, you gotta pay like three hundred dollars. Right. You know, the way I like, I came up with my business, I couldn't pay that. Mm -hmm. I found a different way, and it worked. That's dope. To this day, I'm I'm still paying. I'm still not paying nothing for That's what awesome. I use. That's awesome. So I'm playing. I'm always gonna play the game how it goes, but smarter than everybody else. 
<laughs> it's real shit. It just, I mean, the easier the better. Facts. Because work, work smarter, not harder. Exactly. So, no, I, I love that. Maybe so, <laughs> I'm curious about your editing process because I be editing and that shit, I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, nah, I'll, I'll tell you off of this. <laughs> off like, camera, yeah, I'm yeah. interested. I'm like, what? Well, I need some secrets how I can make my shit yeah. faster and then look raw. So that's, nah, but, that, that's what's up. I mean, because I'm saving money, honestly. Hell yeah. People here wait, uh, paying monthly and stuff. I don't, that. Not that I got time for that, but I just, you know, it's like I said, work smarter, not harder. Facts. So I'm saving money, and I'm, it's working. Yeah, I mean, it's working. Thank God it's working. For real. So wait, you so you have a good thing going on with the, you know, you're about to fly out somewhere else and do some more basketball videos. What is, like, your long-term vision, like, 10, 15 years? Like, what is this going to look like, RTB Films? Okay, so... It's like I said, my main goal is to help as many kids as I can. Right now, I'm working with individual athletes, as in, I got, I'm got i going to mention like three people. One of them is, his, they call him Showtime. Mm -hmm. Showtime the Great. He's, I don't know, like, he's seven years old, playing in the 8U. Seven years old? Seven years old, playing in the 8U. He's he's honestly like, I think, not I think he's the best of the best mm. at his age group. Mm. The things he's doing, like I'm working with him every game, like I'm at every game, every practice, like every workout, like it's crazy. Like me and him, I know he's going to NFL. I'm gonna <laughs> just say that. Yeah, you, like, you calling it, he, bro? He's he's just he's just one of a kind. He's only six years. He's only seven years old. And me and him, even though he's young, he understands what I tell him. Mm -hmm. And me and him are like, like, like this. That's dope. Another person I want to mention is Avari Marshall. Mm -hmm. He's um, he's actually in college right now. He's starting spring football again for his second year. He's at Delaware State. Me and him are like this. Mm. We linked at an All Star game. Dayton Broward. I went to his signing day. After that, we just got close. I, he actually just flew out back to Delaware because he was in Miami for a week. Mm. We did a lot of podcast videos. He he got he got his own podcast coming. Dope. He got people. I'll probably bring him here one day. Yeah, that'd be dope. Um, I got a lot of people. Like he got a lot of people going on his podcast, and it's just me and him. He's he's also going to NFL. That's what's like, up. People I work with, I have so much faith in them. Like, mm -hmm. it's just crazy. Like, I know Showtime, he's young, and I'll have him look back at this, but he's going to NFL. Yeah. Avari, I know me and him always talk. We're, like, close. We, you know, I always tell him, stay focused. You know, leave the girls alone. Leave <laughs> the media alone. Like, Because, yeah. you know, in college, like, it's not even, it's not even about girls because he has girls. I don't know if he has girls or not. But in college, that's the main thing that yeah. distracts you, yeah. the girls. And then it's like I said, you get you get yourself into a problem with a girl. One thing, one mistake can mess up your whole career. Whole career. So I try to tell them like, like when I say stay away from girls, it, that's that's serious. Cause look what happened to Antonio Brown. Facts. Look what happened to all these like athletes like. I work with athletes for a reason because I want to look out for them for real. Mm. And then another person that I also work with, damn, I, I can't remember him. Right you work now. with a lot of people, so I don't but blame yeah, you. I work with a lot of people, but those two are my two main people. Mm -hmm. And then I'm working with a couple of individual people, but I, you know, I can't really mention all of them. Mm -hmm. Those just, those just are the two people that uh, I talk to every day. They hit my phone. The six-year-old, even, you know, he calls me. Mm -hmm. We play Madden Mobile every, like, That's here weird. and there. Me and his dad are like this. Mm -hmm. Like, I will forever respect his dad. His dad is just, he's somebody you could trust. Like, like he, he tells me, oh, whatever you need, I got you. Mm -hmm. I call him. Like, it's just nothing but good vibes. Every time we work, I got his, his work done the next day. Mm -hmm. Like, yesterday, I was in Orlando for him. Mm. I was in Orlando for him. Uh, you know, and his son, we worked, we did our video. I was at the airport, I think, like two hours earlier. Before my flight took off, I was already done. Editing that shit. I was already done. Damn. Like, 
I sent it out this morning. Mm. And I said, I'm, I'm ready to work. For that the boy next, ready for to the next work. <laughs> Yo, Ruben, I love that shit, man. You out here in motion. Like, that shit is yeah. crazy. It's just... I... I don't know. No, but like when you when you talk when you're telling me that like this is what I'm seeing in the future is like eventually you won't be you won't have to go to you'll have so many, you'll be working with so many athletes you'll have people going out there and recording the footage and helping you make these videos and no, put people on. That's undecisive mm. because not everybody works like me. True. I don't want to. I don't want people to mess up the brand. The brand. Off of something they did that has nothing to do with me mm. that I can't control. Mm -hmm. So let's say I hire you to be one of my editors. Mm -hmm. If you don't edit how I edit, and I post it and it looks bad, that's something you did, but it looks bad on me because it's my brand. Right. So me, it's like I said, I'm a hardworking person. I like to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. Only reason why I say that is because not only like forget the money, because I don't I don't really do it for the money. Yeah, the money comes either way. And money's gonna come regardless, mm -hmm. but it's about the people, mm -hmm. and I don't want my brand to look bad off of a mistake somebody else did. So, another thing is, when I'm done working, like I was just saying, I go straight to editing. Not a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. When I go to football games, Friday night football games, Miami Central Rocket football, they're like the best football. High school football team in, in the world, yeah, they're in, good. The, in the nation, my bad. Nation. <laughs> no, no, because but in the nation, probably the world too. No, honestly, no, no, they just won. They just won. Um, they just won four times in a row, state championship Damn. and national right. championship. Wow. Yeah. So me, and, oh, there, there's a third person I was gonna mention, Coach Schuler. He's a coach, wide receiver coach at Miami Central. Mm -hmm. Me and him are like this, mm. like. It's like I said, every everybody I work with, I try to keep a bond. Yeah. So me and him are like this. We got something coming. We started a mic up video every game. So I mic up the coach. He's like, he's funny. He's just, he just, he's like the funniest, one of the funniest people to ever <laughs> live. Like, like people love it. Every time I post it, over 10,000 views on YouTube. Love it. And like, it's, people love it. So me and him got something coming for the upcoming season, and it's just, it's just not something that a lot of people could think about. Mm. I definitely feel you on, you know, you got to be careful on who you bring in. Yeah. Like you never know, but I feel like you could find people that are on that same kind of work ethic, and if they're not, you can fire them. But like you can hire people that could help you expand it because I see this bl beginning big. You know what I'm saying? You don't have yeah. to delegate eventually, right? But I, li I it's like I said, I like working. You like, yeah, you like, like working, of course. Let's say LeBron James calls me, and then, and then name somebody else. All right, so yeah, LeBron James calls you, so obviously you gotta go. But imagine, you know, let's say Le LeBron James, and then like Kevin Durant calls me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to let them know, like, it's like you know, I'm booked this day, but we could work th the next day, right? Because I wouldn't want somebody to meet Kevin Durant for me. Definitely not Kevin Durant, but what if it's like. You know Jordan Jones. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I want to hire you, but you know I'm not LeBron James. You know what yeah, I'm but saying? It's like it's like I said, not everybody works like me. Right. I have my own personality and I have my own type of mentality. Mm -hmm. You get me? So I want like I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable just because somebody else doesn't like act the way I do. I see what you, you get mean. Me? Yeah. So I'm me. I'm my own person. So it's like I like working, no matter how many times I gotta travel in one day. I'm gonna make it happen because at the end of the day, God put me in this position for a reason. I know I know what it is to work hard. I know what it is to like get stuff done. So I'm gonna get it done regardless. Mm -hmm. That's a good attitude. That's, if we we get more men to feel like that about their dreams, like we'll be in a better place. I mean, I'll probably look into it, you know, hiring some people, but. One day. Anytime like, soon. You ain't got to do it no time I don't soon. Think so. I'm just thinking 10, 15 years, bro, because I can see this being huge. Like, you now, should, once I get old, yeah. Yeah. Like, like obviously, right now, you're young. In my 40s. Yeah. Like, you get to 40s. be 35. You're like, all right, shit. Like, I'm getting, I'm getting a little old. Like, <laughs> no, but it's, I love this. Like, yeah, I love it. It's like, you know, without, without all the people that support me, it wouldn't be possible. Like, I thank God every day. And it's crazy because it's, it's like, I'm young. Yeah. I'm young. So. Still got a lot of time. I, I just started in a new decade, 
I just joined the, the Dove Club. Yeah, the Dove Club. <laughs> I just joined the Dove Club, so that's so dope. I'm I'm just you know I'm praying. I hope God has a lot coming my way, but I do I do got a lot planned though. That's what's up. What do your What does your family think? My family. So, I currently live with my grandma and my uncle. Mm-hmm. It dep- depends which house I go to. Cause one lives down south, one lives in Opelika. Mm. So, my mom. Okay, my mom. She lives in Port St. Lucie. Okay. So me and my mom, we go at it, mm. you know, back and forth sometimes. Not like not nothing bad though. It's just like like real life. Like life happens. Mm-hmm. But it it was hard. It was hard starting because I was only seventeen at the time. My mom had just moved. It, it was crazy because my mom moved as soon as I started my business. Mm. I was seventeen. I had just got in my car that my grandfather gave me. And all I had to do was pay for insurance. Nice. How was I going to pay for insurance if I didn't have no money? Right. I came up with this, you know, my brand. My mom had just moved. I went to Port St. Lucie because, you know, I had no choice. I'm under 18. Right. And, you know, you know how the law works. Mm-hmm. So it's just, like, I'm going to just, long story short, I made the decision I'm going to go back to Miami. Because mm-hmm. I'm sorry to tell you, I don't care what nobody says. Port St. Lucie is boring. <laughs> like, it's like, beautiful, but. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. It's safe. Because you can leave your garage open and nothing's going to happen. Nice. But it's like, it's, it's just boring. Yeah. Like, business down here in Miami is nothing compared to Port St. Lucie. Like, of course. Port St. Lucie is, is dead. Like, it's so dead. So, you know, my mom, me, and my mom would argue about it because she wasn't sure about what I was going to do. Mm hmm. Not that she didn't believe in me, but it's like I was young. So right. she wanted to make sure I was good. Right. She wanted to make sure that that you know, uh that I was doing the right thing. I believed in myself. No matter what, I'm gonna always like and I, I told my mom this. I told my family knows there's a mentality I have. No matter what it is, even if I end up in jail, if I wanted to do it, I'm gonna do it. Cause I'm gonna find out if it was good or bad. Mm-hmm. If it's bad, I gotta go with something new. Mm-hmm. But if it's good, I'm gonna make it happen. Dope. So me, I was 17 year, t- 17 years old, not knowing if it was gonna go good or right. But in life, you gotta risk s- certain situations to know the outcome of it. Yeah. So me, I, I I made a risk. You know, 17 years old, going to my grandma's house. Just my grandma's, cause my uncle was still living with her. So before he moved out, I was staying with my grandma. And you know, I do whatever I want, cause you know my grandma. You know how grandmas are. Right. But when I say I did whatever I want, it's like me. I'm not the type of person to go out. Like I hate going out, cause it's like I said, one thing can mess up your whole life, mm-hmm. or you can end up in a place you don't want to end up at. Mm-hmm. So I try to stay away from all the outside like people like you know i try to stay in my own little world so but when i say i do whatever i want i mean like every time i wanted to work i work Mm -hmm. even if i didn't work i still went out to record my brother playing basketball in order to get better working on pictures my brother gets it for free because that's my brother but me the outcome of it is me working hard, me getting better, practice makes perfect. Right. So as soon as I would be done, I'll go back home to my grandma's house and you know, start editing late night, editing the next day, same thing over and over. If I had a car, I'll go to work. I'll be home late, but that's because I'm working. You're working, yeah. Not like one thing about me, I'll never be out late if if I like if I'm not working. Because I love I, I love knowing that I'm up doing something I love. Mm-hmm. I, I love this. I love my job. I love what I do. So, like, being, it took me a lot of time away from my family. Like, being away from my mom, it was hard at first because I was young. Mm-hmm. Once I turned, like, 18, almost 19, I understood because that's when 
the money was coming in, I was be, I was able to pay my phone now, nice. my car, my bills. Then I ended up getting a new car for graduation. So I graduated, and my mom got me a new car. I'll forever be thankful for that. My mom got me a new car, and you know, I just I, once you graduate, it's a new beginning. Mm-hmm. So that's when the real life hits. Mm-hmm. I'm only 18, one one year into doing what I'm doing. I go to college, and so college in Miami. So I'm still away from my mom. Mm-hmm. Not only my mom, but my brothers. But me, the thing with me and my brothers, we stay texting every day. So me and my my brothers understand they because they follow me on the media. But my mom is like, I'm her first son, mm-hmm. so it's gonna hit different. And then I also have a little sister. Now my sister, I mean, she was like what I think four years old, three. So being around, like being away from my little sister, it was hard because that's really the only sister I have. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't want my sister to grow up thinking I wasn't there in her life. Mm-hmm. So every time I get to see her now, it's like I try to make up for everything. I was just with her. Like before I went to Orlando, I was just with her. I took her out. And like I try to keep that connection with my family because family is everything. Mm-hmm. And you never know. Like it's like I said, you never know when it's gonna be gone. Right. And I, one thing about me, I don't wanna, I don't wanna live with no regrets. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I talk, I try to talk to my mom every day, whenever I can, whenever I'm not busy. My aunts, my uncles, like, my aunts that hit me up. There's one of my aunts that's my godmother. She helps me with everything, and it's like. People in my family, they play a certain role right. in my life. So, like, me and my mom, we stay connected. She tries to tell me, like, oh, look out for this, look out for that. My aunt, she helps me with all my, like, like billing stuff. And then, and then my uncle, he motivates me to, like, he tells me, like, about real life. He, motiv- he motivates me with his stories. Mm-hmm. He tells me, like, he, he looks at what I do. And it's like you said, he tells me keep going. Yeah. He tells me I'm doing the right thing. Don't let nobody, like, bring you down. Like, keep doing what you're doing no matter what. And that's, I think, because of my uncle, that's probably the mentality I have. Because mm. he always tells me no matter what it is, do what you want. Because you're always going to find out if it's right or wrong for you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, shout out to my uncle. Shout out to my mom, my whole family. And it's just like, right now it's hard. It, it is hard because, like I said, I'm away from my family. But one thing about it, the way I think, is like I always tell my mom, like, I got so many messages of me telling my mom this. All of this is going to be worth it at the end of the day. And, like, just give it, like, two more years. It's going to be worth it. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll have, I'll, I'll be able to have, like, my family back together. Because a lot of my family down here in Miami, my mom's the only one up there mm. with with my sister's side of her grandma. So, so it's like, I'll be able to have my mom come down here. It's like, it's all gonna be worth it. Mm-hmm. So that's really my family situation. And But they know, they know I'm working. They know I'm not, like, I do not play with no guns. I don't smoke, I don't, none of that. Like, I'm a good kid that stays to what I do. I stay motivated, and I just love to work hard. I love that. That's that's a good message because I know sometimes I'll be doing the same thing. Like, my, my family is – I'm not from Miami. I'm from Illinois. So most of my family is either – my sisters are in college. I have one sister still in – I have two sisters in college in California, one sister that's still in high school in Illinois. I got some parents that live in Illinois, some that live in Atlanta. Like, my family's just spread out. Sometimes yeah. when you're on the grind working, you don't be in touch with them all the time, but – Kind of like how you're saying, like, when I do spend time with family, like, it's important to make them feel loved. And, like, you got to cherish those moments because you don't always have them forever. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's like I said, you never know when it's going to be gone. Mm-hmm. But in situations like that, like, my brother, he's about to be a senior. In a year or so, he's going to be in college. So it's going to get it's gonna get worse for my mom because we're her kids. So as parents, it's understandable for, for us kids because I'm still a kid. Right. I'm under 21. I'm still a kid. So, <laughs> us kids, we have the mentality to do what we want, but parents don't really understand that. 
parents don't under don't, parents don't really understand us mindset, our mindset of what we want to do. They go straight to thinking of it's not gonna work out. Mm. And I don't think it's that though. the The problem is they just don't want you away. Mm. They don't want you away. So before I know before your sister went to college. I know she had to talk to your parents, right? I mean, yeah, especially because I was my oldest one. And I, when I went to college, I know my mom was. You had to talk to your mom, right? <laughs> yeah, she was, you know, definitely didn't want to see me go because I'm leaving the state. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, thinks, the- she thinks something bad is going to happen. But in reality is she doesn't want you away. Mm-hmm. And that that's just how I see it because everybody that goes to college, it's not easy to go to college. Right. Like, not everybody gets the chance to go to college. Mm-hmm. So be able to go to college is, is like. You're blessed. You're blessed by God. And, like, that's just how I see it. Like, when people go away, when kids that are teenagers that are growing up go away from their family, their parents think something bad is going to happen. That's what they tell you. Mm. But in reality is, you're their kid. They've seen you grow up for 18 years. It's hard for them to let you go. Mm -hmm. And I know that's what it is for my mom Mm because everything I went through with my mom, it was hard. Like, I had surgery. I had over... Believe it or not, I had over 10 surgeries. On your heart? No, like in oh, my just body. Oh, in general. In my body. 10? Yeah, over. Jeez. Like, that's around there. Like, like broken eight. bones and, like, no, what is it? Like health problems. Really? One of one, well, one of them is in my head because I have scars. Mm. But besides that, everything else is health problems. Like, I got a scar here. Yeah, I got one right here. Mm. Oh, yeah, I see it. it. This is my main one. This is when I was born. Yeah. When I was born, um. As soon as I was born, I couldn't breathe. Mm. And then I, I went straight into surgery, and that's why I talk how I talk. Wow. But for me, it's just, you know, like with my mom, she didn't want to let me go because mm-hmm. of everything I went through. Makes sense. And it's like I said, I understand it, but she didn't understand me at the time. Mm. Now that she's seen me doing what I'm doing, it's all understandable coming together. But it's like I said, in two years or so, it all makes sense. Wow. It's like everybody has their own story. Mm-hmm. And... I got stories to tell, so if anything, I could write a book. If Hell I want yeah! To. I Hell could write yeah! A book. But it's, it's that's really what it is, though. Like, parents don't want to let go of their kids after being with them for eighteen years, because they don't want nothing bad to happen, and mm-hmm. they don't want to let you go. It's not easy. It's not easy, and it's understandable. It's just that's how life is, though. That's true. I love how you, you kind of. It's like you know how your mom feels, but you're still setting the vision and leading. Like, look, mom, like. I know you want me to be with you, but I need to make some money. Like I got my business. This is what I'm passionate about, and just trust me. Like in a few years, we all we all gonna be together. Yeah. But right now, I gotta work. Like me, honestly, like my mom gonna watch this. <laughs> but like me, honestly, she knows what it is. Like I don't care what my mom says. <laughs> like careful now. I, no, I don't. I don't. Cause I do, but I don't. Yeah. I don't. Cause I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm doing what's right for myself and my future. I'm gonna make sure my goal is me and my brother's goal is because my sister is five five years old at the moment. I I always my I have a brother that's I think he's sixteen seventeen. Mm-hmm. He's in eleventh grade, and then another one he's just turned thirteen in January. Me and my brother's goal is for us to have my sister settled, mm-hmm. so so my sister wouldn't have to work. Never in her life. Mm. So whether it's all for me, whether it's all for them too, my sister wouldn't have to work because I'm going to have, well, I got my business going. By the time she's grown up already, my business is going to be better, 10 times better than what it is now. So right. I'm going to have my sister set. Mm-hmm. I have my sister. I know my mom will have some money for her set for college. So my, my sister would be straight. That's the goal. That's dope. And the reason why I say that is because I don't really have a sister. Like, I never had a sister. Mm-hmm. I did on my dad's side. But, you know, the way that worked, I never saw her again. Mm-hmm. So being able to have my little sister from my mom's side, being able to actually see her, spend time with her, and create that bond with her means a lot to me. That's what's up. I mean, I think your family-oriented mindset, coupled with the hard working, like, you're, you're really going to go far in life. And your family is lucky to have you. You're an asset for sure, helping to lead lead the way for your family like i really think we need more young men to to embrace that like find find your something that makes you want to work hard and and 
support other people so that you can make a living for yourself and your family. Like, it's not all about, it's about you, bro. Like, <laughs> think no, about your family. I mean, it's, it's never about me. Yeah. It's never because there's certain parts that play in my life that is about others. Mm -hmm. Like, with my family, it's about my sister, mainly about my sister and my brothers because everybody else in my family is already grown up. Mm -hmm. They know, like, they know what they want. They, they're over 30, so they know what it is with, to live life. Mm -hmm. My brothers are still growing up. My sister's still growing up. When I do sports and that type of life that I live, it's about them. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. Because at the end of the day, without them, there's no me. They're helping me get content. And then when I work with like, other big people, like King said, I just worked the other day with uh, another YouTuber, uh, Famous Huda. Mm. I worked with Dope. him. So when I work with big people like that, it's not about me or them. It's about what we could bring together. Because, mm. yeah, I'm working with them, and we're working together. But I feel like when you get content creators in one room, if you if you write down on the paper all the mind, like all the creativity things that you have, it will bring you a long way. Mm -hmm. Like just like just so much a person could really think of, like my mindset and somebody else's mindset, we could make something happen like real quick. Yeah. So bringing like me working with big creators. I'm able to help them, and they're able to help me. Yeah. Like, working with King Sid, yeah. he helped me so much. Like, it's like I said, that's why I will forever be thankful, because he helped me under, my first time working with him was at 18. I was just 18, and he taught me the game of YouTube. He mm -hmm. taught me what it was with YouTube. He taught me how it was to like work fast, because when you work with big people, they don't like to wait. Right, I'm trying to get that shit and quick. Not only that, and I understand why. Not only because they're big, and people people think that people think it's not. It's because they're big. It's because when big people pay you, they're gonna pay you good. Mm -hmm. So they want to make sure they get their stuff out. Cause with big people, they get booked every day, so they don't want to move on to the next uh, booking, and then the other ones not even done. It's not finished. Cause yet, yeah. a lot of people post. So you, they don't want to be behind, and it's understandable. So with me, mm -hmm. that's why King said he told me you gotta work fast. I'll be in the car taking uh in the gas station taking pictures of King said. By the time we get in the car, I'm already editing. Mm -hmm. Like that's how, like that taught me right there to never wait. When you have time, do it, cause right. that way you're able to work on the next thing as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. That's bro. I love the work ethic is. Honestly, making me want to work harder, and I already be feeling like I'll be tired of shit working, editing the damn podcast, listening to the whole thing, making reels, the descriptions, promoting it, all that. I mean, what made you start this? I really just wanted to inspire people to become creators themselves, and, and then, like, <laughs> besides the podcast, what is it that you do? Like, on oh, Instagram, you I, just do reels. I got a, re I got a regular job. I'm still doing that shit. I got a nine to five, so I'm trying to make this this business my main thing eventually i mean it's gonna it's, it's gonna work it takes time just takes time but yeah. i feel like with the reels and stuff it, it's not it stresses you out and all. a little bit <laughs> i think that's because you're overthinking it maybe because with me the way i do it it's like you gotta work it's like i said you gotta work smarter not harder mm -hmm. i have everything like if i'm gonna post i have everything posted like ready the day before. Mm-hmm. And you just like, gotta hit it. I'm gonna show you. I go on my notes for football games. Like, bro, this is real life. There's like and that's why I love working by myself because not a lot of people have the mentality that I have. So I go here. So look, I go like right now, mm -hmm. I got no videos to get done. You already got them done. <laughs> yeah. Uh I go, I write down what videos I have to do for certain events. Mm -hmm. And then, so like, let's say I'm in a game. There's what I have. This is the last game, I, last high school game I ever recorded. And you ready, so, you're already ready to so post So as soon that. as I'm posting, you as soon as I got the clip, I copy and paste the caption. The hashtag's already there. Everything's there. Mm -hmm. I go, uh, 
Look, there's like a, another post. And that's the caption. Ca- uh, captions there. Hashtags. Hashtags there. Video cut is there. Ready to so, go. For me, I, I like the best thing I could tell you is have everything ready before. So that way, the next day you're just, just resting, like you're chilling. You're you're posting and ready to post something else. Mm-hmm. So every night, always have it ready before. So that way, whenever you want to post it, whether when you wake up, all you got to do is post. Just hit it. When you brush your teeth, all that, it's already getting likes. All the likes. Are, no matter what, it's gonna, the likes, the views are going to come in. Yeah. But always have yourself prepared because you never want to stress yourself out. You never do nothing last minute. Yeah, and the day and, of, you're like trying to yeah. get that shit together. Yeah. So that way, so let's say, what time do you usually go to work? Usually I'll start work at like 9 a.m. Okay, so, and then what time is your lunch break? Like around 12 or 1 o'clock. So have everything ready before before you go to work or the night before on your lunch break you post. You post that shit. By the time you get out of work, you'll have likes, views, all that before you go to sleep. Get ready for the next one. Get something ready. Mm-hmm. But if not, the way I do it, I don't only do one. You I do, do the whole week type shit. Yeah. I do more than one, so I always keep my content. I try to expand it so that way I have something to post on the daily. Nice. Whether it's on my story, TikTok, YouTube, like, I'm going to post at least one thing every day mm-hmm. on any, no matter what platform it is. That's dope. Yeah, I need to post every day. I'll be getting at least four or five a week, but I, every single day I need to be posting shit. The more, the better. The more, the better. The more, the better. I mean, if you need help, I'll help you. Appreciate Cause, that. Because, you know, me, it's like I said, I like to help others. And I feel like I could really, like, not only when the sport, but when it comes to real life, I could really help a lot of people. Cause, and that's only because of what I've been through. Mm-hmm. Like, and th- that's what I was texting you about. Yeah, honestly, we, let's share it because we, we run out of time, for real. So, wait, how much time we got left? I mean, technically none, but we're just going to keep going to let it kick us out. Okay, so, like me, I... You know, I was around this one person that they stopped me doing what I was doing. Mm. Like, they didn't stop me, but it's like I was distracted. Mm-hmm. I got so distracted where it was like my mom saw it, but I didn't listen to my mom. Because mm. like, it's like I said earlier, I'm going to do whatever I want because I'm going to find out if it's good or not. Long story short, it went bad. It didn't go good. They just... People say they wanted me for my money, so I didn't. I didn't see it as that, but I ended up, you know, getting cheated on. Mm. And like, she stopped me. She stopped me, and it's like your friend stopped you, huh? Well, who stopped you? Oh no, like some girl, some like some girl I used to met. Okay, so she so, was she was cheating on you. No, she cheated me like towards the end after oh, okay. being together for like two years. Okay, so like it, it like. It was hard because, like, that's what brought me down. Mm-hmm. I only had 7,000 followers. Something told me to, like, finally let her go. It's crazy. I finally let her go. I started posting more every day. I started, you know, leaving the house more, like, just by myself. I, as soon as I posted every day, a month later, I went from 7,000 to 10,000. Mm. After that, my mindset was just, it turned on crazy because I always had this mindset but it was just that one person that was stopping me mm. after that I never let nobody stop me and it was just like that that taught me so much like so now now that you know I'm older I keep my circle smaller smart because you never know when somebody could backstab you yeah that's real shit. You never yeah. know, cause people they have ulterior motives. They want to do their own shit. Man. Oh, you got two phones. One for the work, and one for oh, yeah. <laughs> trying to yeah. get like him. <laughs> we got two I mean, phones. Not hard. Okay, this is another thing. Oh, so like, so like, oh yeah. So like, when things went bad, I just you know I prayed, and then that's when I hit my goal. My goal was to hit ten thousand by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. I did that. Like, October. Easy. I was happy. I was happy, but I kept working. Mm-hmm. Right now, I think I just hit like 15.2. Mm-hmm. Nice. And then, 
you know, when things go bad, I just, you know, I pray to God every day. Uh, I do what I do, and I let God do his thing. That's what's up. And then, it, it's like I said, like, the main thing I want to put out there is without people, there's no me. Mm. So I appreciate everybody that works with me, hits me up on daily, to check up on me. I appreciate all of that. Like, the littlest things to me matter the most because, it's like I said, I'm I'm a, I'm a person. I'm a human, so I go through stuff. Mm-hmm. So little things to me matter to me because I know I know what it is to come for nothing. That's what's up, Ruben. I really appreciate you sharing your story and the work ethic, bro. Because I think it's just special to meet people like you. Like I, you know, I don't get to meet people like you all the time, and like, it's been really refreshing to hear your perspective and just to learn from you. So. Thanks again for dropping that knowledge. Where can people no find you at on YouTube, Instagram? Drop that. So on YouTube, you can find me at RTB Films. I'm about to hit 10,000 subscribers. So Shout if, out. if y'all can help me, get me to 10,000. Um, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, at RTB Films. Whatever y'all need, I'm here. And yeah. That's dope. Ruben, appreciate you, bro. Just nah, take no this problem. Picture. We lit. Uh, yeah.